Shalom. It's fine and sure. Let me get into the rock. Just because the media is not talking about the food crisis, and just because you're not seeing people operate as though, as though there is a food crisis, does not mean that there is not a food crisis. There are a lot of people who are depending on the media, who are depending on others to tell them what is happening. But all you have to do in a lot of these cases is just pay attention to what you're seeing. It's amazing today that we can see something and know that it's off and yet and still sit back and wait for somebody to tell us before we make a move. Before we try to preserve ourselves, you know, in all these Hollywood movies. I'm going to go back to the movie uh, uh, 2012 or this is the Greenland movie or a lot of other Hollywood movies. They've already told you and shown you multiple times that the powers that be, the system is not going to tell you something is wrong until it's too late for you to do something about it. It's another, what's another one? Uh, Deep Impact. It's not a good one. Morgan Freeman. They're not going to tell you about anything that's going on until the last minute. Oh, the ones that they plan on saving, they will know. But for your average individual, for your average person... You're not going to hear about it until it's too late. So the fact that, you know, it reminds me even of, of, of repentance, sin. For a lot of people, you're not going to know that you were in sin until it's too late. By that point in time, you may not be able to repent. You may not be able to make amends. You may not be able to uh, pay recompense for the things that you have done. But on average, most people just sit back and they're just waiting for somebody to come and tell them that things are bad. When you can clearly open up your eyes, you can clearly see it, you can clearly visualize it. All you got to do is walk to your local store and look at the shelves. Well, and only the, my, my store is only missing this, 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 and this. Yeah, do you remember three years ago where... Store shelves were full all the time. Maybe four years ago. Where store shelves were full all the time where there wasn't shortages. Now shortages are normal. And it's amazing that how easy it is for us to adapt to the new shitty situation. It's almost like people like and, and love adjusting. We can adjust to shit all day long. Well, I'm waiting for somebody to tell me. So the fact that they haven't told you should already indicate there's a problem with their knowledge. There are food shortages. It's going to get worse. If you keep sitting down waiting for somebody to come and explain it to you and tell you when, when your eyes are showing you something. Just, just go based off what your eyes are telling you. Go to your local store. Look at the shelves. If you see shortages... That should be an indicator. When you go to your gas station, you see that there are, that, that gas station is, is low in fuel or has certain fuels that they're not offering. That should be an indicator. That should be an indicator that maybe you should go do some research and see, is this a nationwide problem? Or is it just a situation in which your gas station? We're just, we're just so used to things returning back to normal that when... Things are not going to return back to normal. We're the last ones to know. We're the last ones to figure it out. Because we're sitting back and we're constantly waiting for somebody else to tell us when we should start getting ready. You got all these prepper channels telling you, but you got to get ready, you got to get ready, you got to get ready. Like, why are you waiting for somebody else to tell you you got to get ready? Why? Can't you go based off of what you see? 
It's like driving on a freeway. Let's say they 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 they're, 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 they they shut down a bridge because they're doing repairs on it. So the bridge, you know, let's say they there's a whole chunk of the bridge missing, and you got all these warning signs that say, you know, uh, uh, no through ahead or bridge not finished or road closure. I've seen people that have their GPS stories on this who have their GPS who will literally follow their GPS and drive around the warning signs because the GPS said go that way. They're ignoring what they see. They're ignoring the signs that they see because their GPS is telling them to keep going ahead and their GPS hasn't been updated. And they will literally drive off a bridge and into a stream or drive off a bridge and uh, onto a, a freeway below drive off their bridge or, or or end up stuck can't turn around happened to a semi truck he was driving around these things bridge was closed couldn't go in reverse because all the different things that they have I'm like you're missing all the signs all these signs that are laid out in front of you to let you know that the bridge is closed and it's not completed you drive around them you're driving around what you see because of what this thing is telling you the media is telling you, they're the GPS. They're telling you where to go, where to do, how to spend your money. And that's all you're, 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 you're paying attention to. You're not paying attention to your eyes. You're not paying attention to the things that are in front of you, the warnings that are in front of you. And many do this to their own destruction. Many do this to their own demise. Not just there, but your families, men. Your own demise. We know how to adapt to shit. But it's funny that we don't, that's not funny at all, it's really sad, that with all this so-called knowledge that we have, with all, despite all this so-called biblical understanding we have, we can't understand the simplicity of the Bible. We can't understand the simplicity of the signs. They're pretty damn simple. It doesn't take a rocket science to look at, a scientist to look at this stuff. So when I started this stuff, started storing food and stuff like that years ago, over 12 years ago, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, 14 years ago, I wasn't reading sign. I mean, I, I wasn't waiting for somebody to come and tell me. Just common sense told me this stuff is so fragile. This system is so fragile that if one small blip happened to it, we'd all be screwed. And I learned that working at a hospital. You know, when you're doing a, a hazmat training, I, I was a hazmat responder at the hospital. We had to do hazmat training. And all the different things that there was hazmat training for let me know that these are viable options that the hospital and the, the, the state, the local government and the state government deemed as these things were threats. These things could happen. So the fact that we're responding on what happens if the ER is bombarded with people contaminated from a dirty bomb or a, a biohazardous spill, intentional or unintentional. And we, and specifically the intentional ones, because the unintentional ones is probably going to be really, really local. But the ones that are unintentional, that it's, it's there to affect ma uh, massive casualties, massive damage to a system. Well, now you're talking about the ER being flooded. And we had to put on our NBC gear and we had to know how to respond and how to separate the the ER onto different triage levels and to drop the curtains in the ER and to get the nursing staff, you know, what they needed. And this is what we did. This is what we trained on every year. You know, after I did my initial training, then it was every year we had to go through and, and research. So that opened up my eyes, let me know, man, that they have a protocol. This hospital and hospitals, because we train with other hospitals too, local hospitals, with the police department, with the fire department, with uh, 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 local leaders in the, in the community. We, th they're considering this to be a problem. And this was way back in what, 2008? And here we are, and the world's gone further, and we see so many more problems, and yet, and still, people are still sitting back. And it's not even they're hoping for things to get better. It's that they're waiting for the system to tell them when to start storing food. 
that's a problem. Especially for those of us in the faith where we talk about preparedness, where we talk about food storage, where you see ample warnings throughout the Bible of famines and shortages and, and droughts, and it's a regular occurring thing. And you start seeing the signs today. You got rivers drying up where barges are having a hard time bringing food up and down rivers, and you're still sitting there. That's the problem. The prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. The foolish one passes on in his punch. The prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. The prudent one foresees. That means he sees the evil. He's not waiting for somebody else to report it to him on the news. The wise man. Yet today we got everybody talking about they wise because they can speak the Hebrew. They're trying to learn another language. Another butchered language. Because of all the time that we've been, you know, has gone in between. They spend their time trying to understand that. But they don't even understand English. They don't even understand what they sing in front of their face. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with learning or striving to understand that language. But I'm saying that we got people who are trying to learn that language. And they cannot see what's happening right in front of their face. But they want to argue with you. How about we learn to take care of our families, to do what the book says? We learn to obey that first. Then there's always room for us to, oh, to, to learn other stuff. And right now, the language that people should be speaking is agricultural, production, coming out of her. That's the language we should be speaking. But that's the language that's abhorred. Yeah, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with learning the Hebrew. But our focus should really be our families right now. And if this whole thing blows over, hallelujah. And if it doesn't, and we were warned, they did nothing about it. What does that truly say about our discernment? Bless y'all. Shalom.